So this is the board that controls each panel. So again, 16 by 16 LEDs get controlled, or 256 individual LEDs get controlled by this board. And in order to do that, the LEDs themselves are RGB LEDs. RGB stands for red, green, blue. There are three colors in the LED, and we mix those colors to create the, um, I don't know, 65 million colors or whatever is possible. In order to do that, we have this board has three multiplexers for the cathode side of the LED. Uh, the, the cathode side is the ground side of the, the low side and this part of the circuit there are actually three of them, they're identical and one, there's one for each color and these multiplex each uh, all the columns the vertical axis of the LEDs uh, for each color uh, again on the low side uh, the high side is controlled by this other section on this side um, that's the horizontal axis or the what we call the rows. Uh, the row selects circuits are there. So essentially uh, the LED voltage is applied through these driver circuits uh, to the anode side of the LED and simultaneously a separate multiplexer is used for each color to apply the ground side to the cathode side of each color. And through by use of the microcontroller and controlling those um, three multiplexers using the microcontroller on the Arduino, uh, we're able to light up four LEDs at any given time, but we light them up in sequence fast enough that it appears like all 256 LEDs are lit uh, simultaneously in the pattern that we've decided. So that's how the board actually operates. So a couple of details to point out here. First off, there's a dip switch right here which is used to address each control each controller board since there's one per panel or 16 of these controllers or I'm sorry one per LED panel uh, we need to address these so that our PC can uh, uniquely send messages to cause LEDs to change colors or turn on or off uh, through that address so each one has a separate address we set that here also there's a couple of options that we can set there as well uh, we have a on off LED which shows power and a heartbeat LED which shows that the thing is actually operating uh, it's a uh, basically these are for troubleshooting they're not really useful uh, to viewers of the cube in operation they're really for for our uh, uh, troubleshooting purposes similarly with these LEDs over here they're uh, they indicate in binary the the row that's being selected at any given moment. They operate so quickly in operation that they appear to be on all the time anyway, so we can slow that down for troubleshooting. So the LEDs really are use, useless to the consumer. Uh, we have a fuse here in a reverse polarity detection circuit, so if we hook the power up backwards it doesn't blow up our, our Arduino or any of our circuits. And uh, we can bring in a separate power supply through these pins uh, for our LED power as basically the, the board's powered by 5 volts off the Arduino which isn't enough power to drive the LEDs so we bring in separate power for that and the driver circuits down here uh, apply that higher voltage we actually use 24 volts for the LEDs uh, even though we're running 5 volts on the Arduino and on, our, on our multiplexer circuits here another thing to talk about is uh, our communications architecture we selected uh, an architecture that uses these adapter boards and we have three different types of adapter boards actually here we can actually, we have, actually have several others we have a wireless board, we use XB this is a series one module and we put it onto an, onto an adapter which adapts it to our architecture this is an RS485 interface which is the default we'll use that for communication between the boards every board will have one of these uh, the wireless, generally speaking, there will only be one because it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, the XB is a little bit more expensive than the RS-485 interface. So there will be one per, uh, per cube so that we can actually manage the cube and control it uh, remotely over wireless. Uh, this is an RF interface. And we also have a Wi-Fi interf interface, which is a, uh, it's actually an XB compatible, pin compatible uh, device, but it does Ethernet. It's made by a company called Roving Networks. And I haven't actually received it yet. That's what's not on the board yet. But you can see the headers where it will plug in. And at that point, once we get that, we can drop that onto one of our boards and we can do uh, control our board via, literally via the internet. 
we'll be able to um, manage it over Ethernet, wireless Ethernet. And those boards install on to this area of the board. This is actually a functional board. Uh, my bench is actually functional right now. I've got two boards here that are running uh, RS485 interface and uh, the module plugs into headers uh, on top of our board. So again, we can choose the interface that we want just by selecting the module we want. And by the way, the, there are headers on top of our modules as well, so the modules themselves are stackable. We can have uh, RS485 or I2C, for example, uh, as our bus interface, and then put an Ethernet uh, board on top of one of them. S saves the need for a separate controller to do the Ethernet interface, or wireless for that matter. So that's our board. That's the electronic set subsystem uh, of the LED cube. And uh, we'll be back later to describe more details.